Hey guys and welcome back to a new episode of Philips Android News. This is the format where I always go over those changes from the past month that affect us Android developers and that you definitely have to know about. So you can really just lean back once a month, watch this episode and then not have to research all these news together on your own. And I have to start with a sad news first of all and that is that the Realm DB's device sync got deprecated. So here you can see it, the Atlas device SDKs got deprecated. So Realm was just a local database client for Android apps. I also was a big fan of it. And that database client is or was maintained by MongoDB. And now an important part of it got deprecated. And that is this Atlas device sync. So while you can still use Realm database as a local database solution in your apps, what you can't do anymore is make use of this device sync. So this was a ready made solution from MongoDB. If you not only wanted to actually save data locally in your database, but also automatically sync that with other devices, because coming up with a real sync strategy on your own can be really difficult when there are lots of different devices, when there are devices in offline mode, when there might be different users and all that stuff. So properly syncing data, keeping that consistent is really difficult. And this Atlas device sync SDK just helped with that. But as you can see, it sadly got deprecated and will reach end of life on September 30th in roughly one year. And you can also find the PR here um, that actually removed this code. So you can see uh, over 40,000 lines of code have been removed from the Realm SDK. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you are using Realm in your app, then you have to ask yourself, are you using this device sync SDK? If not, then you're fine. So the Realm SDK in regards to the local database part will keep on working. But if you're using this device sync SDK, then you um, still have one more year of support. But in this year, you will have to migrate to an alternative. So I think this is quite sad, especially if um, a big company like MongoDB is behind such an SDK where someone would guess that using their services can be considered safe. But I think this was really just an economical decision from them that the device sync SDK was simply not used that often and therefore did not bring them the return of invest they hoped for. So from a pure economical standpoint, I do understand that, but it still sucks for everyone who used that. The next news is a bit more positive, and that is that Coin version 4.0 got released in September. So you can also find the details here in this blog article, which I will link down below. But to go over my personal highlights from that article, on the one hand, Coin 4.0 was now built in Kotlin 2.0. So everything got a little bit modernized in that regard, so that we can also now use it with the latest Kotlin version. Furthermore, the internals of Coin have been simplified a little bit. So that means on the one hand, uh, UUIDs, are not generated with the Kotlin specific uh, functionality for that, the Kotlin specific UUID generator. Because even though generating UUIDs is in and of itself quite a simple thing, at least how it looks like. I don't know the exact logic behind uh, generating such a UUID, but originally every single platform used their own kind of way to generate these UUIDs. And on Android, the way to do this comes from a, a Java function, and therefore this could not be used in a Kotlin multi-platform project, which coin is intended to be used for though. But now there is a unified way to also generate um, UUIDs in a platform independent manner in Kotlin. So this can also not be used in coin. But again, this really just affects the internals and it does not really have anything to do with us developers who use coin i think and furthermore coin also uses the uh kotlin time api under the hood so also just an internal detail but that the library got modernized a little bit furthermore they announced or at least mentioned i don't know if this is the first time they they mentioned this but they mentioned this coin foo project which you can see is still experimental um but that is pretty much an an alternative to coin, so a different side project, that is at least how it sounds like, um, that addresses the limitations of the typical constructor DSL that we used. So the constructor DSL in coin is the way to actually provide dependencies in coin with this single off function, where we really just need to mention the class that we want to provide an instance of in coin while not having to explicitly pass all its constructor arguments. That is a super handy API because then we don't always need to actually change something about how our object is created in coin in our DI module when we actually extend or change our object's constructor. But this way of doing it also had some limitations, especially when it came to nullable types. And this CoinFu project is just meant to address those limitations to also deal with these nullable types. You can see it, it aims to offer a better unified experience on these single off APIs. But as of now, as you can see, it's still experimental. Um, so don't expect miracles from this. Furthermore, a very cool change of Coin 4.0 is that the view model API is now multi-platform. So you have a, a very unified way of injecting view models 
by using Coin for Kotlin multi-platform projects. And that's very cool because Coin is really the primary library um, that we can use for dependency injection in a Kotlin multi-platform project. And since on Android, we typically don't get around using view models, it's now of course very cool that we can now also inject these view models in a Kotlin multi-platform project. Another cool change is that Coin now also provides this Coin Android X startup dependency, which promises to reduce load times by up to 40%. So of course, when we actually boot up our app, then initially there is quite some things that Coin needs to do, since it needs to be initialized, it needs to load our dependencies, initialize all them. And with this specific Coin Android X startup dependency, if you add that to your project, it will make use of this Android X startup uh, dependency, which helps to reduce your app startup time. So if you're using Coin in a bigger project, I would definitely add that um, to take that free boost in performance here. And there are some more changes. As I said, um, the details in this article I will link down below. Uh, down below, you can also find that uh, certain functions and classes have been deprecated now. So in case you're upgrading, uh, go through this paragraph to also know what you need to update in order to get rid of those uh, deprecated warnings in Android Studio. Coming to the next news, which is a quick one, and that is that the room paging library, so the way to actually uh, paginate data from our local room database, is now available to Kotlin multi-platform. So if you're building a Compose or Kotlin multi-platform project and you just need to paginate a bunch of data in your list in the UI, that then comes from a room database, which is already a uh, and multi-platform ready for quite some time, then you can now do this with the latest uh, version of uh, room paging, which at this point is 2.7.0 alpha 08. And lastly, what's exciting is that Android 15, so the latest Android version, is now released to the Android open source project. So if you enjoy working with the Android source code, then this will be cool news to use since you can now work with Android 15 as well. So here is where that was announced. We can also open this Android open source project. There you go. And here you can then also Go to the code to actually check the source code that is behind Android. As you can tell, this is quite a big project, but I think especially if you want to understand how certain things work behind the scenes on Android, so how the Android operating system manages certain resources, then it can be quite interesting to actually dive into the actual source code behind Android. And now you can do exactly that, including Android 15. And if you're taking Android seriously, then down below you will find a link to more advanced Android premium courses, which are really aimed to prepare you for the Android industry. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye. Bye.